Hello, and welcome to the Mind, Body, Spirit Network's High Vibe Tribe Expert Interviews, where every week we bring you transformational leaders in the, in the realm of mind, leaders, teachers, scientists, best-selling authors. We got it all going on here in the mind, body, spirit realm. And today we have two gentlemen to talk to. This is unusual to have two. Um, doing a little tag team here. So before we get started and introduce you to our guests, I want to pique your interest with what our topic is going to be about today. And I have to say it's pretty fascinating what these gentlemen are working on. And I know it um, addresses a pretty significant need in this world. So let's get started. Do you experience chronic pain that holds you back from living a life you love? Chronic pain can be a complex involving much more than your physical body. However, you can live pain-free by retraining your brain, whether, pain, whether the pain is from an injury, a chronic condition, inflammatory disease, or even depression. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest today. The first guest, and Hal, I want you to raise your hand because no one's going to see your name on the video. <laughs> Hal Greenham. That's me. Hal Greenham is visiting, is calling in today from Australia. Thank you, Hal. And I didn't know what time it was going to be when you got here, but it's only nine in the morning. So you're in good shape and all kinds of perky. So <laughs> Hal is a somatic psychotherapist and the clinical director and co-founder of Freedom from Chronic Pain. That's also their website, freedomfromchronicpain.com. And after recovering from his own chronic pain with a neuroplasticity and psychotherapy intervention, he retrained, studying psychology in a number of schools of psychotherapy. Hal specializes in treating chronic pain conditions using the freedom from chronic pain approach, which combines the insights of his work as a therapist with the neuroplasticity techniques of Dr. Schubiner. And before I introduce you to Howard Schubiner, I want you, Hal, could you just tell us what a somatic psychotherapist is? I'm sure not everybody knows. Sure, Liz. Uh, well, firstly, thanks a lot for having me. My pleasure. Um, well, a somatic psychotherapist, soma just means body. Um, so it's, it's a psychotherapist that specializes in the relationship between the body and the mind. Sometimes I say it's like learning to listen to the body and work with the body to heal physical symptoms like what we're talking about today, chronic pain, but also to heal the mind because the mind-body connection is quite profound. And if you learn to really listen to what the body's trying to say, then uh, a lot of healing can unfold. So... Would the body speaking to you just be pain or is there something more than pain that the body would signal? Oh, no. I mean, there's all kinds of, um, there's all kinds of information that come from the body. You know, you look at people's posture. Oh. You look at, look at how they breathe. Um, you look at the patterns of, um, you know, how their body functions throughout the day. Uh, yeah, and then you have the actual kind of clinical symptoms, pain and fatigue. Skin can be, the things that skin does can be very expressive. Right. Um, the immune system, there's a whole, whole, whole rich language that the body has really. And you speak it, I see. I, I didn't even think that, I, I think it's too late in the day, Hal, where I didn't even go that deep into everything the body could speak to us about. And thank you for that laundry wow. list of good things to look for. And our second guest <laughs> that's joining Hal today is Dr. Howard Schubiner. He is the clinical director, medical advisor, and co-founder of freedomfromchronicpain.com. He held the title of full professor of medicine at Wayne State University. Um, Howard, is that in Michigan too? It is in Detroit. Oh, Detroit. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And he worked at Wayne State University for 18 years. He's the director of the Mind Body Medicine Program at Ascension Providence Hospital in Southfield, Michigan. He is also a clinical pro professor at Michigan State University College of Human Medicine. Are you a big football fan, Howard? 
Uh, not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> My dad is, so we get college football every Saturday, and you know, Michigan, that stadium yeah. in Michigan is crazy. I, I, I've been to all the medical, I've been to all the universities and all the big three universities in Michigan. Okay. And, but as a physician, it's a little hard to watch people bang their heads around. Oh, <laughs> good point. So it's a, all right. It's a so let me just, uh, okay. So let me just finish up on Howard. He's a pioneering clinician and a leading researcher in the field of mind body medicine and has published more than a hundred, has been published more than a hundred times in scientific books and journals. He's the author of Unlearn Your Pain and Unlearn Your Anxiety and Depression. Are those two different books, Howard? They are. They are. I, I figured as much, but I wasn't sure. He's also the co-author of Hidden from View with Dr. Alan Abbas, and he was included on the list of best doctors in America four years in a row. That's quite a, a feat there, mister. Congratulations. Well, don't believe everything you read. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you got to say that because, you know, people are going to be knocking on your door if, you, if you're one of the best doctors, right? It's like everyone wants you there, Howard. Well, you know. Humility is, is, is one of the most, is the best virtue you can have in my book. Yes, I agree. So as many of you know, uh, I'm a part, an affiliate partner with the Shift Network, and we bring in um, transformational leaders like Hal and Howard because they have uh, upcoming events that we at the Mind, Body, Spirit Network want to support because it's really aligned with our intention to bring um, significant change in people's lives. So let me just tell you real quick, the name of the event that these gentlemen have, um, you've already done your event, right, you guys, on October 12th? That was, yeah, we did, okay. uh, we did do the launch event, yeah. yeah. Okay, but well, you can still, for listeners and viewers, you can still access the recording of that event, which is called Three Keys to Free Yourself from Chronic Pain with Hal Greenham and Howard Schubiner. So, and we are doing a live Q&A next week as well. Oh, what's the date on that? Uh, I'll just check. I think it's October 30th. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that's right. It's your October 30th, uh, Australia. It's 31st in the morning. Oh, okay. Happy Halloween. <laughs> uh, so we're not going to talk too much about the event right now because many of you listeners and viewers um, won't be around to, it will have passed. So we want to get let you guys, uh, viewers and listeners, get to know Hal and Howard and what they're doing because they can still help you outside of this particular event. So I first want to ask, I don't know who's the best, I would assume Howard, this is for you. What is neuroplasticity? Yes, uh, it's a concept that is becoming widely recognized and known that the brain uh, changes that the brain works by neural circuitry and that neural circuitry is changeable. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that we can change our personality. It's not fixed. Uh, pain is what we're talking about today. And a lot of our work concerns chronic pain. And uh, when doctors uh, look at chronic pain, they think of it as static. They think of chronic pain as incurable. Uh, they don't know why it occurs. Uh, but for the most part, as we can talk about, most people with chronic pain do not have a significant uh, or serious structural abnormality in the body, and therefore their pain is actually being produced by their brain as part of, and it's therefore changeable because the brain changes. Every time we learn how to learn a new skill, like playing the guitar or uh, snapping our fingers, riding a bicycle, the brain changes. There's literally the structures and the circuits of the brain change. And that's true with pain as well. The brain changes when we, when we begin to experience pain but then the brain can change again when we, so to speak, uh, unlearn that pain. So the process of neuroplasticity is basically the changeability of the brain. Oh. So uh, 
I'm surprised I didn't know how to say that earlier, but I'm a big fan of Lumosity.com. You must be familiar with that online brain game, Howard. Mm -hmm. Have you ever used it? Uh, I've read about it. I've okay. looked at it. I haven't actually used it. Okay. Um, yeah. I've had tremendous results, I have to say, using okay. that, that game. <laughs> yeah, there's so many ways of everything you do, you know, everything you do changes your, your brain. I, I'm a fan of, I'm addicted to crossword puzzles. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm highly, as hell knows, I'm highly addicted to the New York Times crossword puzzle. Oh. And uh, I do it every day. And it's, you know, one way of trying to keep my brain that active. Oh, so just, you know, while we're on the topic, Lumosity has like five different areas of the brain that it works, uh, you know, like processing, speed, um, memory, a bunch of them that works all areas of the brain. So you might want to check it out, Mr. Neuroplasticity. <laughs> That's go. a good one. <laughs> now, how, how did you, well, I want to know how you two met, but let's talk about how you got into this first or did it all happen together? Like. How did this partnership begin <clears throat> since you're in Australia and Howard's in Michigan? Yeah, that's right. Not, not the guy I've been to walking down the street. <laughs> Sorry, Howard. <laughs> well, I think, Hal, you could tell, you could tell them uh, your story of how you got involved in this. Well, that's it. Um, yeah, I, I was kind of dragged kicking and screaming into this field, you could say. Um, so I was running a successful business in Melbourne and I was playing music in a couple of live bands in the evening. I started to get this terrible pain in my wrists. I uh, started in one and then moved to the other. And then basically, yeah, I just tried all these different treatments, saw the best doctors and uh, acupuncturists, osteopaths, um, all the best medical, uh, Western specialists, massage people, um, <clears throat> you know, kind of fascinated in, in therapies and healing. So I thought it was a good opportunity to explore them all, but tragically, none of them actually really worked. And, um, yeah, after about six months, I started to get really worried because I couldn't really run my business anymore because it was really hard to type and mouse because the RSI had got so bad. And then the pain started spreading to my ankles, which was very mysterious. Just running one day, I got this <clears throat> kind of sprain, but it never really healed. And then I could hardly really walk properly. And yeah, before I knew it, I had this mysterious chronic pain condition. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, none of the doctors could really give me a conclusive diagnosis about why. And it was pretty devastating. I couldn't, it was really hard to live independently anymore because it just became hard to, you know, shop and cook and clean and drive my old car without power steering it was like really painful. Um, so yeah, I had to move back to Canberra, uh, move in with my family. And um, yeah, it was a terrible kind of journey really out of um, very high ability you could say into disability in my wow. life and it was um it was yeah it was a real real dark night of the soul and so i was very grateful for um for an, an encounter that i had with a very caring holistically oriented uh, gp here in australia and he spent a long time with me in this one particular consult and asked all these searching questions about you know, my medical history and what was going on in my, on my life. And um, at the end of the consult, he said, look, Hal, I actually really don't know what's going on with you. If I was going to diagnose it, it'd be chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia because you've got so much fatigue as well as the pain now. And, uh, but as I walked out of his office, I just, um, I just had this lightning bolt moment of intuition and this kind of, very clear, wise voice basically said to me, if you, if you look at and change your relationship with anger and fear, you are going to get better. And uh, it's, yeah, it was pretty exciting. I haven't heard that voice very often in my life, but I know when it does speak, it's usually got some amazing wisdom for me and it did. And yeah, 
it turned out to be right. I started researching about the connection between emotions and the body, pain and the brain. Found the work of Dr. Sano, started reading his books. Uh, and then, yeah, I just knew that was it and started doing the work. And then maybe three months later, I was 50, say 50% better. And then I had to do a bit of psychotherapy and yeah, made it back to 100% pain free. So, so you were not a psychotherapist prior to this? No, no, I was a musician and uh, <laughs> I was, a, I was a, web, a web developer back in the late 1990s when it was still cool and unusual to have a website. How you don't look older than wow. 32. <laughs> <laughs> how, how the heck did you, you know, even have you might that? Not be able to see my fairly, fairly gray hair there, Liz, but thanks for the, thanks for the compliment. You know, we've never, I've never revealed this publicly before, but um, that's how we met. You know, how that voice that you heard that after walking out of the doctor's office, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Howard, I just never told you that before. <laughs> you may just. <laughs> but how do you know it wasn't? Oh, how that's it! You've been acting like a skeptic all this time to keep your true <laughs> identity as a spiritual healer yes. from the world. But here it's been revealed today, everyone. Yes. <laughs> all right. So, how did you two meet? Uh. How did we meet? I, I mean, I started doing this work around 2002 after reading a book by the aforementioned Dr. Sarno, Dr. John Sarno from NYU in New York City. He passed away about two years ago now, and he was a legendary figure in mind-body medicine for many. And um, his, I read one of his books back then, and uh, I just got really interested in it. I called Dr. Sarno up. I went to work with him for a bit and I just started out on this path. And uh, as I started out on this path, I began to learn more and we eventually started doing some research and I published with some colleagues, uh, especially uh, my, my best colleague, Mark, Dr. Mark Lumley. Uh, we published some papers and I ended up, as you mentioned, writing a couple of books and uh, and then that's how I met Hal through, uh, through, you know, doing this work and he was doing this work in Australia and oh. he reached out to me after he heard my voice on the, on the you know, in the, the God, my godlike voice and uh, <laughs> we, we started working together. <laughs> that's, oh, wow. Yeah, I've heard of oh. Dr. Sarno. Is there something else that he's renowned for, or is it just mind-body medicine in general? Just that, his books. You know, he wrote, he primarily he was a physiatrist, a physical medicine and rehab physician, and he saw a lot of people with back pain. Okay. Then he determined over the years that a lot of people's back pain was not related to a problem in their back, but related to a problem with emotions. Oh, right. Yeah. Now, are you too familiar with uh, Louise Hay and her book, You Can Heal Your Life? It is the best-selling nonfiction book of all time. Oh, is it? It is. I didn't know Isn't that. It really? It's wow. A, it is the best-selling <laughs> nonfiction book of all time. Wow, I um, didn't know that. That's a great. Well, well, the thing that the thing that she talked about and that, that people really related to is the messaging, and it's kind of what you were alluding to before. Does the body message us? Uh, my view is that. The physical, uh, the physical symptoms that we get in our body that are messages are actually messages from our brain. Our brain is using our body to send the messages. Oh. And uh, for example, I have a, a patient, a, 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 you know, a later age uh, woman who had pain in her buttock on the left side. And I asked her when her pain started and she said, when my husband retired. So uh, that was a message that her, and you could say her butt was giving her, but I would argue that it was her brain was giving her that message by using this part of her body that had symbolic value because her <laughs> husband apparently was a pain in the butt. Oh my God, that's too funny. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what Louise Hay talked about was, 
the relationship between different body parts and what messages they may pertain to. I don't personally believe that they're always the same. I think you have to take each person as an individual and try to determine if there's a particular message there. Sometimes people will get a pain in their neck uh, because they're doing a lot of work with their neck or like Hal got pain in his wrist right. uh, because he was typing a lot and his brain used his wrist to create that pain as a message, but the message wasn't necessarily, I don't know how you might speak to this, but the message wasn't necessarily something to do with your wrist or the symbolic value of that. Uh, the message might have been that you're putting too much pressure on yourself or you're overwhelmed or you're trying to do too much or, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, absolutely agree. I think some sometimes there's a this classic kind of symbolic content to the location and quality of the physical symptom. And other times you can kind of go hunting for a physic for a kind of symbolic meaning. But and yeah, I don't I don't know if that's the most useful thing. Like generally speaking, the in our work it seems like the pain or the fatigue or whatever the main symptom is is more a message from the unconscious to say, you know, there's there's a lot or there's too much happening here. I'm getting overwhelmed by some combination of feelings that are really strong. Um, and then, yeah, usually we try to get people to reflect on what's happening in their life. You know, what's changed recently? Have there been any drama or stress or trauma or change in a relationship or work or something? Um, and it usually doesn't take too long to work out, you know, what the key kind of underlying emotions or emotional factors are that are actually driving the formation of this physical symptom. So let's talk about, um, let's get right to the chronic pain thing. And I love this, uh, that you use the term chronic pain loop. So what's going on in a chronic pain loop? What's happening is uh, that our brains actually create what we feel. Our brains create what we see. We don't see with our eyes, actually. We see with our visual cortex. Our eyes take in light. But to see, you have to make sense of that light. And that's what our visual cortex does in the back part of our brain. And so you basically, we see in a large to large degree what we expect to see and what we've seen before. And it's similarly with what we feel, we feel what we expect to feel. And our brain, the subconscious part of our brain is trying to make sense of what's happening in our external environment and our internal environment. And when we are, as Hal said, when we get overwhelmed, if our brain feels that we're endangered in some way, then the brain can create a message of danger. And often that message of danger can be pain. It can also be anxiety, fatigue, insomnia, depression, et cetera. But when the message that we're, we're endangered, maybe we're trapped in our life in some way by a relationship, by a work situation, whatever it is. But when the danger signal in our brain, that's a neural circuitry uh, that gets set off that creates, literally creates the sensation of pain. All pain is actually created by the brain. Now, pain can occur because of an injury, obviously. Uh, so when an injury occurs, signals get sent to the brain, but nevertheless, the brain still has to decide whether to, to turn on pain or not. When a child falls on the playground, they may look around and see who's watching and they may cry or they may not cry. That's a decision that their subconscious brain will make. And so we, there's many, many occasions where someone had severe physical injury and had no pain at all, probably because there was something more important for them to do, such as get to the hospital or get out of harm's way. Uh, and there's many instances where People have no injury, but there is severe pain. So pain is a neural circuit that the brain creates. That's just a fact. And so this neural circuit can become chronic as a pain loop, 
uh, when the pain circuit gets reinforced. With different okay. events, you mean? Like another event occurs, so then it... It gets reinforced by two, two major, uh, three major factors. One factor it gets reinforced by is how we respond to the pain. When, when we fear it, when we worry about it, the more we focus on it, it's just like an itch. If you have a mosquito bite, the more you focus on it, the worse it's gonna get. And it's the same with pain. The second thing that makes pain chronic is ongoing stressful life events, ongoing emotional events that continue in our life. And the third thing that tends to make pain chronic is the fact that some people's danger alarm signal is set at a more sensitive setting because of prior history of stressful life events, in particular, prior childhood trauma. Okay. So is this along the same lines? The, um, what you talk about what is the radical neuroscience that explains the power of predictive coding in chronic pain management? Is that kind of along the same lines, a lo different little... That's... That's exactly what it is. So the story I'd like to tell about predictive coding is my wife has the same breakfast every morning, sliced apple, yogurt, granola. Last summer, she woke up early, it was dark. She had her breakfast, she had an extra slice. She brought the slice up to the bedroom, I didn't see it. I opened my mouth, I bit on it, and I wondered why was my wife poisoning me? Because the taste that I got was disgust, like she had given me a rotten apple. It turned out, that that day it wasn't an apple, it was a peach. Peach is my favorite fruit. It was a sweet peach, it was a beautiful thing, but my brain was expecting apple. It was predicting a certain thing. And when it got the peach, even, even though it was sweet, it created disgust because it was soft. So that's predictive coding. Okay. Several years ago, I had back pain and I heard every time I bent forward. It turned out there was nothing wrong with my back, but every time I bent forward, my brain was predicting pain and creating pain because it was, it was, it had learned from a prior injury that bending forward was dangerous and it was protecting me from the danger of bending forward. That's predictive coding. Okay. I'm ready to call the brain dumb, but <laughs> it's well, protective. It's it's a brilliant, yeah, exactly. It's a brilliant protective device. If you, some children are born without the ability to experience pain, and those kids often die at a young age. Oh, really? Pain is important. Pain is not the problem, it's the solution our brain has devised. Okay. It feels like it's betraying us, and it's so horrible and so overwhelming. We have tremendous uh, sympathy and caring for our patients for the pain that they have endured because Hal's been there and I've been there and most people have been there. Uh, but what we're bringing to them is hope and optimism that they can get better. So how did you two come together on this? Like what's your roles? Are they, you have your strong suits, each of you, or do you both have equal strong suits and you just kind of put them together like a crossword puzzle <laughs> at the New York Times? Al, well, I'd like to hear your answer on this. Um, well, basically, um, Howard's the good looks and I'm the brains. And, <laughs> oh, thank um, you. He's also I the think spiritual that combination master, don't forget. Served, served us really well. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, well, basically, you know, I'm, I'm a psychotherapist and Howard is a physician and those two roles work really, really well in this field because what happens with a lot of people with chronic pain is um, I think there's, you know, maybe a fourth category that Howard didn't mention before of like what can exacerbate the kind of loop of pain and make people worry more about their pains that frequently doctors uh, and uh, practitioners who are, who are not familiar with the latest neuroscience of predictive coding and how pain works in the brain can often see someone present with pain and then kind of blame, kind of look for a cause, like look for, you know, a bulging disc or look for some kind of 
um, thing that that is that is a kind of plausible cause for the pain. But what the latest science is showing us is that those causes are actually usually not the true cause of the pain. So people can kind of go into this um, practitioner induced unnecessary fear of the pain. And that's why correct diagnosis is really essential. And so <clears throat> when I reached out to to Howard years ago to suggest that we collaborate more. I think it was actually after one of our, one of my clients was struggling with this diagnosis thing. Because sometimes there's a lot of gray areas, you know, and it can be quite difficult to sift apart, you know, what is a genuine medical issue and what is the, the kind of brain just getting stuck in a pain loop. And uh, yeah, I remember we worked together with Howard on it and he was really helpful in helping tease that apart. So in, you know, in trying to come to provide a comprehensive solution to the, what is now an epidemic of chronic pain, I think doctors and therapists need to work better together because they both have an expertise, which is important in the, in the treatment, because as Howard said before, um, it's very often a trauma of some kind, whether it's a specific traumatic event or a childhood trauma that can sensitize the brain, it can kind of sensitize the, the danger um, alarm mechanism parts of the brain that can really predispose people to developing chronic pain syndromes later in life. And psychotherapists are experts at helping people to um, understand and work through and process trauma process strong emotions, um, you know, try to understand more about family patterns because it's often personality dynamics that are key drivers of the mind-body chronic pain process. Things like perfectionism, um, people pleasing, um, moralistic or um, call it kind of goodism, you know, the kind of compulsion to always be good and ethical can sometimes put a lot of pressure on the inner self and uh, or it can be relationship patterns, dependency, a lot of different dynamics that sometimes require a little bit deeper investigation to get into the core of what's actually driving this thing. So I, I can't believe, <laughs> listen to me, I can't believe that you guys can, you've created a course to solve this problem. Like a program, you know, that's what this Shift Network event is all about. Like, how did you come about What's it called? It's called, you have it called something, right? The chronic pain freedom technique or something. There's a technique that you've developed to help people. They can self-help themselves. These are, these are evolving, you know, evolving uh, patterns of treatment that uh, people have been using for, you know, the last couple of decades and really the last hundreds of years. There's so many ways to heal. And what we're trying to do is take the best uh, of the types of therapies to basically reduce fear, calm the brain, give people hope and optimism, activate neural circuits of joy and ease, deal with emotions that haven't been processed, emotional events that have, have been unresolved, uh, and and pair that with some neuroscience and education about the brain and you put all that together and uh, you get a course and uh, you know we'll teach the course this year and a year from now we'll teach it and it'll be slightly different right i'm a cook as, as we were talking about right before yeah and make it better <laughs> so let's talk about the event well, exactly on on the um on the well, I was just going to mention as well on the um, on the freedomfromchronicpain.com website. There's there's also another course, and that's now in version three. And as Howard said, you know, we'll be making further versions of that course. Um, you know, to keep putting the best exercises in there. Nice. Now, <clears throat> are both of you? Do you both work one on one with people still, or are you more focused on? helping people through online courses? 
I see one one on I see people one on one as okay. a therapist and how it uh, how it advises on people's medical situation sometimes when that's needed. Now, Howard, have you been a physician? I'm a physician. I'm an internal medicine specialist. So oh, to speak. okay. And I see people in my Detroit location uh, for consultations and ongoing treatment. Uh, and I see people from um, you know all around the country uh, often come in to see me. Nice. Hal, are you open to international clients? Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, as long as we can just you know find the the crossover with the time zone, but it it actually works quite well with the US because yeah, as as it is now, I can work in my day, and it's you know the late afternoon or evening in the US when people yeah. actually want to often want to do sessions. So if you want to connect with either one of these gentlemen again, the website is freedomfromchroniccompain.com. And uh, as they mentioned, they do have online, an online program there, which is different than the one that's coming up with the Shift Network. So gentlemen, can you just tell the audience about the event, the, the free online event, what viewers and listeners can hope to learn from that, which is, again is called, let me say, what's the name of that event, gentlemen? I, oh, Three Keys to Free Yourself from Chronic Pain. That's the name of the event. Could you kind of give us heads up on what people can expect from that? Yeah, they'll get two of the keys, and then we keep one key separate. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll hear Howard talk to you. That's part of the deal, too. He's come in as spirit, and if you hear it, you're going to know who it is. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> okay, so you get two out no, of we, we, keys. <laughs> we, we talk about the – we talk a little bit in more detail about what the – what the diagnosis with you know how you diagnose this condition and and uh that's that's a significant part of that we talk a little bit more about that so that's pretty detailed and then we go into uh what are the uh, components of the treatment model that we use okay and then it leads into a an online a live online course which is how many weeks is that, gentlemen? Is seven or eight weeks or more? Seven sessions. Seven, okay. And um, those are live. And for those of you who may miss the, the launch of the live course, you typically can get access to the recording of the course, is my understanding. Does that sound right, you guys? Correct. Yep, that's, okay. that's correct. So, yeah. Why don't you tell us the difference uh, between, you know, if people miss the Shift Network event altogether and that course, talk about your program that you offer through your website versus the Shift Network one, just so people know what to expect. Um, well, yeah, so the, the main content areas will, will be similar. The One of the differences is the freedom from chronic pain program we have on our website has 10 modules of content. Uh, the shift network, we're doing it as seven webinars. So maybe it's a little bit more content um, on our, the program on our website and it probably will take a little bit longer to complete. So a little bit more comprehensive. Um, both of them are supported by uh, an online fa Facebook group that we will be attending. I think with the uh, Shift Network one, the Facebook group will be active for about three months. And if people sign up to the program on our website, uh, they get 12 months access to the materials and to the Facebook support group. Um, the material on the program on our website is delivered via a learning management system it's a little bit different to the, the way that they do it on the shift network. They tend to use PDF documents and so on. And uh, the program on our website, we use a few more video resources of the exercises, for instance, the work to connect with the inner child and inner parent aspects of the self as we start to do more of the personality oriented work. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're both, they'll both be, Great courses and people would get uh, would get a lot of value out of either of them. I think. I would think other therapists would get a lot of value out of them as well, to combine what you guys have brought together. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, therapists would find them really stimulating and they might be able to you know, start using some of those ideas with um, some of their clients who come with pain, given that it's so common now. Yeah. Um, could it turn into a certification course for therapists? Have you thought that far ahead? Not to throw more work at you, but just, I know we have a lot of alternative health types watching this and listening to this on our network. Yeah, well, we're, we're doing a lot of training uh, in in the states. I'm involved in a lot of uh, tr uh, training programs in live in person training programs. Uh, we have a couple two day several two day training programs around the country in the U.S. and uh, we're planning a five day training program in Detroit uh, in March of 2020. Uh, Hal and I are planning to do some training in Australia as well coming up in 2020. Uh, we've, I, we, I've kind of resisted making it a certification for a variety of reasons, but um, I know that a lot of people like certifications. <laughs> right. I mean, if it does the job without it, that's what, yeah. unless you're regulated in some right. way. Yeah. All right. Well, Gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining us today and sharing your expertise and, and the work that you're doing with chronic pain. And I'm a marketer, so I always, I do research and the research, you know, the amount of people Googling chronic pain or all the, the different types of maladies you addressed is crazy amount of search. So you're serving a, a great need, that's for sure. And I thank you guys for that especially if you can do your own work at home through online courses and, and what you're proposing here for us today. So thank you, Hal, for being awake at 9 a.m. in the morning in Australia. <laughs> and That's Howard, it. I'm not usually awake at 9 a.m. I can have to make an exception for you guys. <laughs> and Howard, thank you for whispering into Hal's ear. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today. There you go. And um, best of luck on launching this with the Shift Network. They're excellent partners to get in on and to really ex um, really make your what you're doing really visible in the world. I thank you all. And um, listeners and viewers, if you enjoy what's going on here, please subscribe to our podcast at highvibetriberadio.com or our YouTube channel at highvibetribetv.com. And you can find this interview at the mindbodyspiritnetwork.com slash interview dash Hal dash Howard. <laughs> Try to make it simple. I got to write that down too or I'll forget. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And um, we'll see everyone and listen in on everyone next week. <laughs>